So this is just a quick video on how to upload your DNA to GEDmatch and then opt in if you've already taken a DNA test with a company like Ancestry or 23andMe. I've recently done videos on the Sumter County Does, Pamela Buckley and James Freund, who are identified using genetic genealogy, and this was only possible because of people uploading their DNA to GEDmatch and family tree DNA. Afterwards, I had quite a few people asking me how they could upload their DNA and help identify other John and Jane Does too. So this video is going to show you how to upload to GEDmatch, and I'm releasing another video today on how to upload to Family Tree DNA as well. So for starters, go to the GEDmatch homepage at gedmatch.com, G-E-D-M-A-T-C-H.com. If you've already got an account, it's pretty simple, you just log in right away. But if you don't have an account already, then just scroll down slightly and you'll see not registered, click here to register at the main site. Click on the here button, it takes you to a hyperlink where you can quickly set up an account. You just need to enter in your name, email address and password and click register and you'll be all done. Then go back to the home page and log into your account. So when you log in, it'll come up with this page and on the right hand side you can see all the different DNA functions and on the left hand side you can see your DNA resources with a few DNA kits that I've actually already uploaded beneath. They've got the police button on the right hand side of them which means that they've been opted in to law enforcement matching, meaning that if police are looking to identify John or Jane Doe or a suspect in uh, a case of murder or sexual assault, then they can see your DNA when they have the... Um, the John or Jane Doe's DNA or the suspect's DNA in the database. Um, in order to upload your DNA, on the right hand side you'll see the upload your DNA file subheading. Beneath that it's got generic uploads and you just click on the generic uploads button to start with and that'll take you to a new page. So this will take you to a page where you can begin to start uploading your DNA. So you type in the name of the donor first, that's the person whose DNA you're uploading, usually your own. You can type in an alias below if you don't want it to come up in, a public, in the public database. And then you can choose the sex of the donor, either male or female below. After that, you can type in your haplogroups groups if you know them, but that's not really relevant to the actual um, uploading of the DNA. So if you don't know, then don't worry. And you choose the company that you tested with, usually Ancestry or 23andMe, but there are plenty of other options available if you tested with a different company. Then you have to choose uh, whose DNA you're uploading, usually your own, but if you're uploading with somebody else who's given you permission, there's a different option to below. And there are other options too for different circumstances if you'd like. So at the bottom of the page, you have the option to opt in. Once again, opting in is basically opting in your DNA so that people who are trying to identify John or Jane Doe's or trying to investigate suspects in criminal cases involving murder or sexual assault, opting in means that they can see your DNA results when they're searching. So they don't see your actual raw DNA files, but they can tell that you're a match to, to the DNA sample that they have. Um, once again, this was how the Sumter County Doe's were identified and hundreds and hundreds of other people have been identified and had their names returned to them using this same method in the last two or three years. So I would encourage you to opt in, but if you don't want to, you can just click the opt out button, which would mean that people from law enforcement investigating would not be able to see your DNA match come up on the database. You then click the choose file button beneath and you choose the raw DNA file from Ancestry or 23andMe or from whichever company you tested at and you click open. This will add your DNA to the page and then all you need to do once it's come up is click upload. Um, if you need help on how to download your raw DNA in the first place, go on the website of the company that you tested with and there'll be detailed instructions on there. So on the next page that it takes you to, simply click the I'm not a robot button and then wait to be taken to the processing page or click the proceed with processing button underneath. At this point, you don't actually have to do anything. You just wait while the DNA file uploads. It should usually take a few minutes time, although sometimes a little bit longer if the systems are busy. And then once the DNA file has been fully processed and uploaded, it'll say upload complete and it will have a kit number that's been assigned to you underneath. So the upload is now complete and at the bottom if you'd like to return to the home page there's a quick question to which the answer is usually 24 to 48 hours. Click submit answer beneath and it will take you back to the home page. So once you're back at the home page you can actually see on the left hand side the kit that you've just uploaded. Uh, the one I've recently uploaded is at the bottom. It has a square symbol next to it and in a matter of one to two days that will turn into a green tick. Um, the green tick means that it's now been fully up processed and uploaded to the database and you'll be able to match with the entire database, see all your matches on GEDmatch, as opposed to now where at the start when you first upload, 
you can only see one-to-one -one matches, aka matches with people whose kit numbers you already have, which you can do using the one-to-one -one or Toastmore DNA comparison function on the right-hand side. After a few minutes, that square symbol will actually turn into what, to me, looks a little bit like a spider. Um, I'm not sure what it's actually meant to be, but that will uh, happen in a few minutes, and then within a matter of hours or days, it will turn into the green tick. I hope you found this video very, very helpful. And if you've got any questions about the process, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will answer them to the best of my ability.